Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 29th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 105 here on the great WRKO. Okay, later this hour, you don't want to miss it. Massachusetts is now on course to become a sanctuary state. A very controversial amendment has passed. We're going to discuss that at 135. But first, let me ask you a very honest question. If you were at your local supermarket, I don't care, Shaw's, Stop and Shop, uh, Big Y, uh, Market Basket, whatever it is, what would you do if anti-gun rights, anti-Second Amendment activists led by David Hogg were staging a die-in all over the store? I mean everywhere. In the fruit aisle, in the vegetable aisle, in the cereal aisle, in the meat aisle, everywhere you've got young students, 17, 18, 19 years old, social justice warrior activists, all of them lying on the ground, pretending that they're dead because they've been shot from a mass shooting uh, due to somebody having a gun. Well, this is exactly now what's taking place in Florida. Listen now to this story. This is an incredible story. And it ties into Starbucks, and I'll show you exactly how. There is a grocery store chain. Honestly, I've never heard of it, but apparently it's quite big in Florida. It's called Publix. P-U-B-L-I-X. Sorry, Publix? Okay, Publix. All right, my bad. Publix. P-U-B-L-I-X. Apparently quite popular in Florida. A lot of people like it. Sort of, I guess, like their version of Stop and Shop. Something sort of a Ken Shaw's Stop and Shop. You know, not... Yeah, a Costco, really? Yeah. More like a Costco? Yeah, it's huge. No, I know it's big, but you don't pay a membership fee and everything, do you, Brittany? No, but it's like big like that. Oh, okay, okay. It's big like a Costco. Okay, but uh, Costco, I keep thinking membership fee. Okay, but it's huge. Okay, it's big. And people like it. Okay, people like it a lot. Well, they found out that Publix... They give money, as most businesses do, to both political parties, right? you got to grease every palm to make sure they basically stay off your back. So he, uh, the, one, the owners of Publix, as part of their campaign donations, campaign con- contributions, gave money to a Florida Republican gubernatorial candidate, Adam Putnam. Adam Putnam happens to be pro-NRA, pro-gun rights, pro-Second Amendment. Well, guess what? David Hogg found out about this campaign contribution. And so he immediately went on Twitter with his uh, social justice warriors. And he told them straight out, together we can do anything. And then ordered his zombies to, quote, do a die-in. To hit every single public store grocery store across Florida, 15, 20, 25, 30 activists per store, and just start lying on the floor and stay there for hours and hours and hours, days if necessary, until Publix would stop funding anybody that supports the Second Amendment or the NRA. And so as I... As I'm talking to you right now, there are pictures. It's it's weird. I mean, it's a bit disgusting, but it's weird. It's bizarre. I'm looking at, you know, these are 17, 18-year-old kids lying on the floor. And I don't just mean one. There's like an army of them. They're lying on the floor, and their hands are like curled up around their heart like they're dead. Their feet are extended, and... Right near where the apples are, the apple section. There's a four or five of them right where the, the the dairy section is, the milk. Another one is the vegetable section. There's another one. You have mothers who are walking over these bodies to try to get fruit salad. You have others that are walking over bodies to get bread. And so they so disrupted the ability of public's customers to, you know, shop, to do grocery shopping, 
that Publix recanted. They essentially waved the white flag and said, okay, you win. And they're now saying they will no longer support anybody that backs the Second Amendment or anybody that backs gun rights. In fact, they're going to suspend for now, quote unquote, um, they're going to suspend all corporate funded political contributions. Here's what they said. At Publix, we respect the students and members of the community who have chosen to express their voices on these issues. That's what they said in a statement. We regret that our contributions have led to a divide in our community. We did not intend to put our associates and the customers they serve in the middle of a political debate. So I just got to stop right here. You didn't. You have every right to cut a check to any candidate you want. It's David Hogg and his left-wing social justice warriors and his his militant left-wing activists. They're the ones that put your customers and your associates in the middle of a political debate. It's not your contribution. It's that idiot. But I digress. Let that go. At the same time, we remain committed to maintaining a welcoming shopping environment for our customers. So as a result, we decided earlier this week to suspend all corporate funded political contributions as we reevaluate our giving processes, i.e. we're not going to give any more to anybody that's pro-guns, pro-NRA or pro-Second Amendment. Basically, David Hogg has now a veto power over which groups we give money to, which candidates we give money to, and which candidates we don't give money to. Now, this kid is not going to stop. He's like a spoiled child. The more you appease him, the worse he gets. Okay, this, I mean, he's going now from being a spoiled brat and a real nuisance and a pain in the rear end to now really becoming a serious threat to to me, to public safety and law and order. I think there's no question about it. He wants to plan a die-in at Trump Tower next. He tweeted that out today. Well, of course. And they're going to do it, and everybody's going to kowtow, and everybody's going to capitulate until somebody gets hurt. And somebody eventually is going to get hurt. Together, we can do anything. So he tweeted out, together the young people will win by choosing love. You know, I love it how bullying and intimidation is suddenly, quote unquote, love. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Half of my brain, when I see stupidity like this, thinking, what gives you the right to impede me? I'm a paying customer. You're not. I'm in a grocery store. I'm minding my own business. I'm not asking you your political views. You shouldn't ask me my political views. I don't care if you vote for Obama, if you voted for Hillary, if you love Elizabeth Warren. I don't, I don't care. I really, I don't care. I'm there to get groceries. You should be there to get groceries. You're lying in my way, making it impossible for me to shop. Who gave you that right? Nobody gave you that right. It's not a public space. It's a business. Half of me thinks, just run him over with the freaking cart. No, I'm serious. Like, teach him a lesson. Like, don't, or just keep walking over him or whatever, and you happen to mistakenly step on him or whatever. I'm sorry. You're on the ground, not me. Not because you're injured or hurt. You're willingly on the ground as a quote-unquote protest. Well, I'm sorry. You're in my way. Get out of my way. It's rude. It's inconsiderate. But worse than that, you're making the functioning of everyday life and business impossible. That's the point. That's the point. You want to protest, get a permit, go outside, whatever. That's fine. I'm a First Amendment guy all the way. But you don't have a right to start interfering in the ability of a business to be able to function as a business. I mean, you're making everybody else extremely uncomfortable and you're inconveniencing everybody else. So half of me says just if you had a grocery cart, I'd just, just go over them. Say, okay, you're going to be that stupid? I'm sorry, you got to learn a lesson. The other half of me says, well, what kind of a company are you if you roll over that easily? Because I'll tell you what, I mean, you know, we, hey, you want to judge Feely? Instead of going to the courthouse legally, civilly, peacefully, Start the rally after the court finishes its day 
and holding a peaceful protest, you know, we can go to Stop and Shop or Shaw's or Market Basket. We can all start lying down on the ground. Say, no, we're not going to stop until Judge Feely is removed from office. I'm sorry. Judge Feely has to go. If Judge Feely doesn't go, I'm sorry. Good luck shopping. You're not getting your quart of milk. Forget your bread and milk. You're not getting it today. And this is the larger point. Whether it's Starbucks or whether it's Publix, look at left-wing activism. Everything now has become politicized. Businesses have become politicized. It's no longer just the classroom or academia or popular culture or the mainstream media. It's not just news reporting. Now, it's actual businesses are now completely enslaved and controlled by the radical left or bullied and threatened by the radical left. Now, I'm sorry, but to me, are we running a business or are we now running indoctrination camps? Are we running a business? Or does a business now have to serve its political masters, i.e. David Hogg? My friends, enough is enough. This kid is out of control. And it's time somebody put him in his place. 617-266-6868. Everything's on the table. Starbucks, what would you do if you were an employee? And serious question. Let's say it didn't happen in Florida. Let's say it happened here in Massachusetts. Diane's at your local grocery store. What would you do? What should customers do? 617-266-6868. Your calls next. 120 here on the great WRKO. Okay, Vinny and Saugus. You're up next, Vinny. Thanks for holding and welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure, uh, Vinny. With respect to uh, the kids doing the die-in, I'm, I'm, I'm actually on my way to Market Basket now to pick up a couple of things. If they're there laid on the floor, I would trip over them, get hurt, and go out on the ambulance. So then I'd hire the law firm. Jeff, you're a Three Stooges fan, aren't you? Yes, Okay, remember the law firm they used to use? Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe? I'd hire them. <laughs> I mean, no, really. I, I mean, you got to see these pictures. They're incredible. You've got, like, you know, moms. You know, I'm talking, like, middle-aged fathers and mothers trying to do grocery shopping, and they're standing over these kids lying on the ground, and, like, they're just they're standing over the body. They're walking over the bodies. And you could tell on their faces, they're like really annoyed. Like, what are these kids doing? How come there's so many of them? Why are they all on the floor? I, I, I just want to get my bananas. I, I don't know. I just want to get my lettuce. I, I just want to get my, my, you know, my whatever, my skim milk or whatever it is. Why, why are they here? And why is it impossible for me to maneuver in an establishment that I pay good money for? And David Hogg considers that a victory. 617-266-6868. Larry in Belmont. Larry, how are you, my friend? Jeff, it's good to hear you. Listen, I was so hoping you were going to talk about this today. Um, <clears throat> I had two points on hold. Now I have three, if I may. Go ahead, Larry. The floor is okay. yours. First of all, well, actually four. Now maybe the um, all the Starbucks employees, they can stage a dying this afternoon to, to simulate how bored to death they are going to be at this uh, re-education. <laughs> What a lot of people were, um, I noticed on the news, they were not, they refused to point out, it's like lying by omission, that those two gentlemen who went into that, uh, Starbucks brought their own water in so they wouldn't have to pay the exorbitant fees right off the bat. And they were combative to the staff and to the police officers when they got arrested. But they don't talk about that either. Well, yeah, right? or Larry, that it was, it was company policy until then. To right. say, if you're not a paying customer, you can't use the bathroom. Exactly. And if you're not a paying customer, you have to ask them to leave. And if they don't want to leave, then if you feel threatened, call the police. So yeah, here my... you have these poor employees, Larry. They've done right. everything by the book, and now today they're being called a racist. Everybody's right. being called a racist. They're the scapegoats to it. Now, point two is, <clears throat> when will the Cheesecake Factory hold their sensitivity training? Because not a week later... A 22-year-old black man named Eugene, Eugene or I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right, his first name right, Eugenior Joseph, 
was berated by 12 cheesecake employees in Miami for simply wearing a Make America Great hat. Now, look at the difference. He was a paying customer. He was going into the Cheesecake Factory to do business, to give his money to that company. And they treated him so badly, him and his girlfriend had to leave. These two guys went into Starbucks with no intention of spending any money, brought their own stuff in so they wouldn't have to spend money, and they're being hailed as heroes. They actually they got paid. Right, and they got paid for they it. They got paid. I mean, the, the uh, Starbucks settled, and they settled for a lot of money. Now, I'm wondering how long the liberals are going to enjoy this little David Hogg schmuck when, because he wanted to stop them from donating to Second Amendment issues. Yes. Publix went in and says, no, we're not, we're not going to donate to anybody right now. And that included a bunch of liberal causes, including Planned Parenthood. Yes. All that money's been pulled. For now. Well, yeah, for now. I mean, I got, I got a feeling it's all going to come back out once things cool down. But I don't think he was, a, you know, I don't think he went into this a typical 18-year-old. He doesn't think ahead. He doesn't plan three stages ahead. He goes, wait a minute. I'm going in there thinking, oh, they're just going to cave to the NRA and that's it. No, we've decided we're not going to deal with any of you all. And we're just going to press on. No, I know. So all of the other liberal causes that he loves, they just got denied their money as well. Exactly. You're right. And Typical teenager. That. Typical yep. teenager. Never thinks two, three steps ahead. Impulsive. Now. Everything now. You're con no thought of the consequences. You're, you're completely right. Look, let me tell you what my fear is with this guy, okay? He is so coddled by the media. So lionized by the media. He is so out of control. He's not going to stop with guns. You mark my words. This guy, this is a training ground for him. This for him is the minor leagues. He wants to go to the majors. He's going to do Planned Parenthood. He's going to do abortion. He's going to do open borders. He's going to do amnesty, illegal immigration. He's going to become a big never Trump resistance guy. And for some reason, everybody thinks you have to coddle him, appease him and lay down for him. And this kid is a train wreck waiting to happen. I'm just telling you, it's, it's inevitable. This kid is going to do something that's going to get somebody hurt. The only question is, when? Maria in Boston. How are you, Maria? Hi, Jeff. Maria, how, how are you? I'm good. It was so much fun meeting you the other day. It's great to, to put a face to your voice. It really yes. is. Um, I, my daughter used to work for Starbucks. Uh, thankfully, she quit uh, a couple of months ago. Um but the first thing that she said was that this girl did exactly what she was supposed to do, you know, and, and then she gets fired for it. But my, my issue is they're opening up the doors to everybody now. So when the, when the mobile uh, pickups started, the kids that worked there, their tips got less. They, they were getting less tips because the people would run and grab their order and leave, no tips. Now that they're going to be open to the public to just hang around, these these poor kids that are that are still working there are going to make no money. So uh, I would think that the turnover between now my daughter worked in Melrose and she did have to deal with the homeless population even in Melrose. Uh, people don't people don't realize that. Um, the, this this company is going to go down, and I think it's going to go down fast. Maria, let me ask you an honest question, okay? Yep. You want to go to a Starbucks, you want to grab a cup of coffee and whatever, uh, a muffin or a little piece of cake, a fudge brownie, whatever it is. You go into this Starbucks, it's packed. you got homeless people everywhere. They smell of urine. You got drug addicts in the bathroom. You have teenagers now everywhere, yelling, screaming, loud. Everything is Snapchat online. You got to go walk over bodies. It stinks. It smells. You got to order your coffee, order your cake, whatever it is. Pay 10, 12, 14 bucks. I'm not in the mood to tip. I'm in the mood to get my food and get the hell out. Am I wrong? No, you're absolutely right. And I mean, personally, even though she worked there, I'm a Dunkin' Donuts person. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, born and born and raised in Everett. I'm a loyal Dunkin' Donuts person. I like their coffee better. Um, there's nothing at Starbucks that I like. And 
even if there was something that I wanted there at this point, I wouldn't go. I'm with you. Amen, Maria. As always, great call. Brett in Honolulu. Aloha, Brett. How are you, my friend? Aloha, Jeff. <laughs> my Radio Free America from the Democratic Socialist State of Hawaii. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff. You know, this is, uh, this is, you know, the, the progressive liberals took over our institutes of education back in the 50s. Now these graduates and uh, members of that cult that came out of those schools is now running the businesses of today, and this is what we get. You know, eventually it's you know it's more indoctrination of uh, people in in the feel feel me. Uh, my feelings are more important than my biology or anything else. You know, it's what I feel like. As far as the date, uh, the Hogue thing goes, Jeff, in, in two years, this guy is going to be a nobody. And in 10 years, he's going to be the manager of a Starbucks in Florida. <laughs> so, you know, we're just, uh, we're grooming these kids to, uh, eventually just be the sheep that they're going to be. You know, I don't think David Hogue is, uh, it has a, a thought of his own. I think he's being spoon fed all this from the liberal progressive institutions, common cause, Planned Parenthood, uh, you know, new name, ACLU, whatever it is, they're feeding him this. They found their poster child, and they're going to run with it until, uh, like I said, in two years when he dies out and it becomes a, becomes a fad. Uh, Brett, so, as always, and, very good call. Thank you. I, I agree with you. Hey, hey, Jeff. As far as as far as what happened with Publix, what that, what they should have done was lock the doors and arrested all those kids. I agree with you. I agree with you, Brett. Thank you for that call. That's what exactly why I said. Excuse me. Call the cops. Arrest every single one of them. You don't have the right to. You're disrupting the peace. You're disturbing the peace. You know, you're not a paying customer. So as far as I'm concerned, you're not welcome here. Kick every single one of them out. I am so with you on that. 617-266-6868. Brainwashing, I'm telling you, is now becoming the norm in American society. That's what's going on with Starbucks. All right, my friends. Five minutes. Massachusetts, will we become a sanctuary state? The White House is now announcing new tariffs on Chinese goods. Yes, baby. Evan Heidenrich is in the RKO newsroom with those details. What are they, Evan? 137 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. Will the People's Republic of Mark Massachusetts now go the way of California? Full sanctuary state status. Well, listen to this. The Democrats, if they don't, it's not because for lack of trying. Listen now to this one. Unbelievable story. So, just before the Memorial Day weekend. So, everybody's getting ready for Memorial Day. Everybody's getting ready to barbecue. Have a good time. Watch the Celtics. They lost, but still. Play against the Cleveland Cavaliers for Game 7. Maybe go to the finals. People are going to the beach. They're seeing their family members, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A few actually even commemorated the vets, but let that go. What does the state Senate do? In the dead of night, literally... When people went to bed in the wee hours of the morning, they actually passed an amendment to the state budget. And this amendment, specifically, there's no getting around it, this amendment would all but establish Massachusetts as a quote-unquote sanctuary state. And what it would do in particular is it would prevent all state and local authorities, doesn't matter, state police, local police, your local mayor, whatever, any state representative, anybody, from asking immigrants about their residency status. So if you're an illegal, they are forbidden by law to ask about your immigration status. It would give them a pure safe haven a shield here in Massachusetts. But it's even worse than that. It also would effectively prohibit, restrict severely, any collaboration 
between Massachusetts law enforcement and federal immigration officials. In other words, you, th you know somebody's an illegal immigrant. He's a member of MS-13. He's a murderer. He's a rapist. He's a drug dealer. He's a human trafficker. Whatever it is, you want to tell ICE about him? You By this law, this amendment, you cannot tell ICE. You are pro prohibited, forbidden to inform and cooperate with ICE. Now, not only would this turn Massachusetts into a second California, and let's be very clear, this would act as a massive magnet for even more illegal immigrants to come. They would pour in by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, over time. This would open up a huge bienvenuto sign to every drug dealer, human trafficker, MS-13 gangbanger. If you're a violent criminal illegal, either you go to California or you go to Massachusetts. And I'm telling you, the weather in California is better, but the welfare benefits, because there are a little stricter in California, not much, but a little, the welfare benefits are better in Massachusetts. So, if you're, let's say, related to Manuel Soto Vettini, now he was legal, he was on a green card, but if you're from the Dominican Republic and you, a family member of Soto Vettini, and you want to be a big heroin dealer, come in illegally. Don't even bother with the green card, okay? Like Soto Vettini did. Come in illegally. You're completely protected. You'll get your Section 8. You'll get your EBT, you'll get your welfare, you'll get your mass health, you'll get your food stamps, and you can deal all the bags of heroin you want. And if the cops try to contact ICE or federal immigration officials, the cops are going to be in trouble, not you. That's what this amendment would do. Furthermore, so not only is this going to lead to a lot more illegal immigration, a lot more welfare fraud and abuse, a lot more crime, a lot more drugs. Okay. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna really, it's gonna destroy Massachusetts. My other question is this. What does this have to do with the state budget? In other words, it was a complete abuse of the normal budgetary political process. What does illegal immigration or a sanctuary state have to do with the state budget? The state budget is supposed to deal with how much do we allocate, I don't know, for uh, hospitals, how much do we allocate for the roads, how much do we allocate to fund the state government. It's about dollars and cents. It's about, you know, uh, um, you know uh, what you take in, outlays and, expand outlays and revenue. It's about revenue and expenditure. How much do we take in? How much do we spend? That's what it's about. Instead, they completely hijacked the budgetary process to stick in an amendment in the middle of the night before Memorial Day weekend so nobody would notice it. Because they know that if this becomes public knowledge, they know if the public becomes aware of this, you can forget Judge Timothy Feely. I am telling you. If they try to ram sanctuary state status down our throats, I'm going to put 25,000 people on the streets of Boston Common, and everybody knows it. Right there in front of the state legislature. We're going to flood Boston Common with protesters. So the only way to do it is by sneaking it in slyly, cunningly, like a thief in the night, through the back door. Now, this amendment... By the way, the Democrats are cheering it. The Boston Globe loves it. The media elites are patting themselves on the back. <gasps> Look how progressive we are. Oh, to boldly go where no moon bat will, will, will dare to go. To boldly go where no moon bat wants to go. It's now headed towards the State House. The question now is, will Porky Pig... Okay, will House Speaker Bob DeLeo take up this amendment and have the State House vote on it? If the State House decides to pick up this vote, I'm going to hold a rally. 
because there is no way in hell that we can allow sanctuary state status to become the law of Massachusetts. Baker says, in theory, he will veto it. I don't trust Chicken Charlie. I don't trust Charlie Faker. He has stabbed us in the back repeatedly. So now the ball is in the House court, in the State House, and in Bob DeLeo's court. I'm going to watch this like a hawk. But if Bob DeLeo moves on this bill, our answer should be loud and clear. No to sanctuary state. We don't want to become the California of the East Coast. Agree? Disagree? 617-266-6868. Your calls. Next. 149 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, the bloody deed has been done, at least in the state Senate. You know, you figure with all the problems they have, Stan Rosenberg, the Senate president, having to resign over a huge scandal involving his uh, homosexual male lover. Uh, were they married, Brittany, or were they just partners? It's his husband. Okay, I'm sorry. It is a homosexual uh, husband who apparently was engaged in sexual harassment and sexual assault upon numerous people up on Beacon Hill. You figure out all the scandals they have. They got enough on their plate. Nope. They now passed an amendment in the middle of the night, just before Memorial Day weekend, that would make Massachusetts a sanctuary state. It now goes to the state house. We're going to monitor it there. Join Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. Should Massachusetts become a sanctuary state? The Moonbats say yes. I say hell no. Chuck in Danvers, you're up first. Thanks for holding and welcome, Chuck. Jeff, I love you, man. I, I love you too, Chuck. I wanna, In a I wanna... non-sexual way, I love you, Chuck. Well, can't we leave the door open? Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, can I uh, just make an observation? Yes. Uh, I have a feeling that this uh, sanctuary state stuff that is new to our vocabulary, it shouldn't even be in it, I have a funny feeling that it's nothing to do with protecting illegal aliens as much as it is to do with making citizens feel powerless. You mean like law-abiding citizens like you and me? Citiz uh, law-abiding well, U.S. citizens making us feel powerless, powerless and demoralized, breaking us? Yes, powerless to do anything, powerless to call the cops, powerless uh, just trying to break our spirit. Chuck, almost, I... Almost like a na 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 and you know, it's just like day in, day out. It's just incredible, and yet, uh, you know, it, what it comes down to is they pack, they always package it as one thing when it really is another thing. Do you remember a while back when we all had to go to high definition TV? Yes. They packaged it as, oh, you'll get a clearer picture and blah, blah, blah. But the real reason, I think, was so that they can monitor what we watch and various and sundry other things. I mean, this is like classic uh, marketing it as one thing and it really being another. What do you think? Uh, Chuck, it's, it's, uh, you're, you're right. It's classic bait and switch. It's classic bait and switch. So I want to ask all of you. Do you think, look, it's got to go to the state house, so we'll see what happens in the state house. But are the Moonbats enough in control of this state, the radical hard left? Do you think they could succeed and ram this thing through? I get the sense they don't have the votes. And I don't just mean in the house. I'm talking about at large in Massachusetts. Why else do it in the middle of the night? Why attach it as an amendment to the state budget? Why not vote on it as, you know, as a stand, as a standalone bill? I think it's because, yes, there's 35, 40%, the hardcore Elizabeth Warren, radical globalist open borders left. I don't think they got a majority. And I think that's why they're trying to do this in the sneakiest, most devious way possible. Am I wrong? 
617-266-6868. Mike in Saugus, you're up next. Go ahead, Mike. Jeff, if Massachusetts goes the way of California, I will stop paying my taxes. I will get in touch with my conservative friends, and we will all stop paying our taxes, and we will put the money in a fund or whatever until they make up their mind and start representing the taxpayers and not continuously helping all these special interest groups and illegals and everybody else, giving them uh, free tuition to these colleges. Uh, it, it's just gone too far here in Massachusetts, you know, if they even consider doing this. Mike, I'm just curious. You know, I want to ask you this. I always obey the law, no matter what the law is. I'm, I'm a law-abiding person. I believe in the rule of law. Look at the precedent, though. Is it me, or are they establishing a very dangerous precedent? If you're telling illegal aliens who have come into this country illegally that it's okay to be an illegal, that it's lawful now, at least in Massachusetts, to be an illegal, well, it's illegal to not to pay my taxes. But, you know, how come I don't, how come I don't get amnesty for tax? How come there's no amnesty for taxpayers? In other words, where does this end, Mike? That's the point. Where does it end? It never ends because the Democratic Party is not the Democratic Party of John F. Kennedy of the past. They have all lost their mind, basically. I'm with you. I, I, look, I, I agree with you completely. Thank you for that call. Look, uh, the Democratic Party today is not the Democratic Party of Franklin Roosevelt or John Kennedy or Robert Kennedy. It is a pure, hard left, socialist, anti-American party. And I think the sooner people begin to realize it, the better. Jason in Middleborough, you're up next. Go ahead, Jason. All right. I think the bottom line here is let's petition to stop federal funding. I mean, someone had someone had mentioned that you become a you become a sanctuary city or a sanctuary state, and all of your federal funding is cut off. Cut it off. Well, Jason, you know what I think. I think the moonbats in this state are so anti-Trump and never Trump and part of the so-called resistance. They don't think he'll do it. They don't think he'll do it. Or I think even better yet, Jason, I think they're yeah. itching for a fight. Oh, I think they want to be like California. Let's sue and let's sue and let's fight it out in court. And, you know, we'll pat each other on the back and look how we're standing up to this guy. And there isn't enough voters here in Massachusetts to try to do like California, though. You see, that's where I agree with you. I, I, and, and just even sheer numbers. I mean, right. say what you want about California. That's 35 million. You know, that's no joke. That's a country. But, you know, what are we, 7 million tops? Plus the fact that uh, California is right on the border of another country. We are not. It's pretty easy for us to stop people from coming into Massachusetts. Jason, you know? really good call. Thank you for that call. I appreciate it. 617-266-6868. Look. I honestly, there's so much pressure against this bill, primarily because of this audience, to be honest with you. I think DeLeo would be a fool. DeLeo would be so reckless. He'd be insane, okay, if he tried to push this in the state house, Because he would get a backlash, and he would get a political war like he's never seen. So I think if he's, you know, he's got half a brain on him. I think he's going to say, you know what, maybe the moon bats in the state Senate think it's a good idea. I don't want to get shellacked on this. I don't want to get wiped out by this. I can tell you this. If they do pass this, the first thing I'm going to do is reach out to the White House. And I'm going to personally tell President Trump, if I can get him on the phone for 30 seconds, you got to cut the entire state's federal funding. Let these moon bats put their money where their mouth is. And when their constituents begin to realize money for law enforcement, gone, money for hospitals, gone, money for basic infrastructure, gone, we can't afford it. I, we're, we're not California. We're not an economic powerhouse. We're not. And so, you know, they want to do this shtick. Go ahead. Don't bite off more than you can chew uh, more than you can chew. And they're biting off a hell of a lot more that they can chew. Cut off all federal funding. Squeeze them dry. Agree? Disagree? Tom in New Hampshire, you're up next. Go ahead, Tom. Hey, Jeff. I'm still back on the David Hogg thing. Go ahead. Shoot, Tom. Uh, 
Uh, what I got, I had a house in uh, Florida. I sold it because my mother passed away in 2005. But even back then, the political correctness, I didn't even recognize it as such back then. But I had an incident in a public, and the management and the employees didn't do anything about it. I was actually physically attacked in one of those stores. Oh, and my God. They, they just looked at me with blank stares on their faces. So the political um, mach- political correctness machine was alive and well back then. I never, uh, long story short, I never went back to Publix. But that's what they're all about. They don't back up their, if their employees stood up, you know, and helped me, um, they would have not, they would, they, I guess they were instructed not to help anybody that's in trouble in the store. But it goes way back to even 10, 13 years ago. And I didn't see it because I didn't wasn't educated enough. But now that I look back on it, it's coming back in vivid color. But um, just so you know, that's what they're all about down there too. It's all a political liberal liberalism down there as well. They don't dare to say anything to anyone that does anything in their stores. Tom, thank you very much for that call. Thank you so much, my friend. Look, you're now seeing the rise of liberalism's brown shirts. These David Hogg is a liberal fascist thug. That's what he is. And the more you appease him, the worse they get. Okay, coming up next, it's a huge story. It's a bombshell. It just broke maybe three minutes ago. ABC has now canceled Roseanne. Why? Because of tweets that they say are racist, repugnant, and unacceptable. What did Roseanne say? And should ABC have canceled her show? That bombshell story. But first, President Trump is warning of meddling in the upcoming midterm elections. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. He has all of those details. Take it away, Evan.